morning, everyone. It's my pleasure to welcome you to our service today in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. As always, it is my hope and prayer that our time together is one which is meaningful for us all, and that when we leave this place today, we will do so feeling a bit better about our God, about our neighbors, and about ourselves. I extend a very warm welcome to our visitors who are here sharing with us. We do hope that you find us to be a warm and a welcoming congregation, and that your time spent with us is one which is uplifting. We also say a very warm greeting to those of you who are listening on VOWR this morning, and those of you who are watching on Facebook and on YouTube, it's always wonderful to have you joining with us, and we truly do hope that you feel a part of what we share in this day. I'd invite you to take your seats for a few moments. There are some announcements to share with you. <clears throat> I'm going to get to ones that aren't printed first, just a reminder of some upcoming meetings this week. Um, the VOWR radio board is scheduled to meet tomorrow evening at 7 o'clock, so members of the congregation who are on the board, please take note of that. Also, our church council is scheduled to meet Tuesday night at 7 o'clock, so I would ask members of the council to take note of that as well, to make the effort to come along and to share in that meeting. Um, also, the UCW is going to be meeting next Saturday at 12 o'clock, bring your own bag lunch kind of thing. And, uh, of course, if there are any women in the church who are interested in learning a bit more about the UCW or sharing with them, please feel free to come along as well. That'll be downstairs, I believe, in the primary room of the, uh, the church hall. Uh, with connection to the uh, council meeting, uh, we should have some more information with regards to our progress on the uh, furnace updates and whatnot. So we'll uh, be sure to make note of that uh, in uh, next week's bulletin. Uh, Wednesday night, I'm going to be starting a Bible study holding it in the office foyer at 7 o'clock, uh, just out in the, the office area there. So if you are interested in coming along, I would extend an invitation to you. We are doing our best to try and make it um, uh, available online as well. So if there are those of you who are watching or listening who would like to participate and cannot uh, be here in person, if you send me an email, uh, bmercer at wesleychurch.ca, I should be able to uh, get you the proper links and whatnot for that for Wednesday night. Uh, the other thing I would lift up to you is a special service that's coming up, as most of you are now aware. Uh, George Street United Church is going to be closing its doors, but they are holding uh, both a combination of a, a celebration of their 150 years of ministry within the city but also an opportunity to gather together as they formally bring that pastor relationship to an end. That's being scheduled for Sunday, October the 29th at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. And uh, it would be a nice gesture for all of us if we were able to come along and to share with, uh, with the George Street congregation in uh, celebrating that ministry. Uh, one last announcement to share with you. I've been wrestling with it all week. But uh, Austin Matthews has six goals now in two games. The Leafs are 2-0, and oh, so it makes it a lot easier to make this announcement. On Thursday, November the 16th, we will be holding a flipper dinner here at the church. Uh, it's going to be available both takeout and sit-in. Uh, so if you are interested in the takeout, they will be available between 5 o'clock and 5.30 on November the 16th, and then the sit-in dinner will begin at 6 p.m. Uh, tickets are almost printed. They'll be available uh, very shortly at a cost of $30 for that. So we have uh, 150 tickets we're printing, I believe. So, uh, you know, if you're interested in getting your flipper dinner, uh, please feel free to contact us as soon as possible. Why? I have no idea. But there it is. And let us now take a moment to begin the formal aspect of our worship service. And we do so each and every week by lighting our Christ candle. And we use this candle to serve as a reminder that Jesus Christ came into the light of the world. And we as followers of Christ are asked to reflect his light no matter where we may be. We also use it to remind ourselves that Christ came into the world to be the Prince of Peace. And we as God's children are challenged to be peacemakers. And perhaps it is very fitting that we need that reminder in these times as we see so much turmoil and war and violence that's touching our world. 
So let us indeed take up that call to be peacemakers, and I would extend an invitation to you now with a handshake, a smile, a wave, whatever you're comfortable with. Let's greet each other with signs of Christ's peace and welcome each other to this service. Our call to worship is found there in the order of service, and I'd invite you to join together now as we begin our time with one another. In the midst of fear and anger, in the midst of mayhem and destruction, God calls us. With everything else going on, who has time for a feast? We're busy. We'll get around to eating eventually. In the midst of our anxiety, our worry, in the midst of bill paying and appointments, God invites us. We are tempted to just grab a bite, a sandwich between errands, a snack we can eat while driving or checking email or working on today's big project. The feast is spread. All are invited. All are welcome. We are invited. We are welcome. We are worthy. How will we respond? Gracious God, with open arms you welcome all who call on your name, who acknowledge you as Lord and look to you in faith. No one stands outside the circle of your mercy and love. And so we come to offer you our worship, to declare that you are our God and that we are your people, called and chosen by you from the very beginning. Through the presence of your Holy Spirit, open our eyes to see you here. Open our minds to receive your truth and our mouths to speak and sing your praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And our opening hymn for this morning is one we should have been singing weeks ago because it seems to have worked. Number 225, we praise you for the sun. Hymn 225. seated. As we share together now in God's word as it's revealed in scripture, we turn first in the Old Testament to the book of the Exodus, reading from the 32nd chapter. Let us listen for the word of God. When the people saw that Moses delayed to come down from the mountain, the people gathered around Aaron and said to him, Come, make gods for us, who shall go before us. As for this Moses, 
the man who brought us out of the land of Egypt, we do not know what has become of him. Aaron said to them, Take off the gold rings that are on the ears of your wives, your sons, and your daughters, and bring them to me. So all the people took off the gold rings from their ears and brought them to Aaron. He took the gold from them, formed it in a mold, and cast an image of a calf. And they said, These are your gods, O Israel, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. When Aaron saw this, he built an altar before it. And Aaron made proclamation and said, Tomorrow shall be a festival to the Lord. They rose early the next day and offered burnt offerings and brought sacrifices of well-being. And the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to revel. The Lord said to Moses, Go down at once. Your people whom you have brought out of the land of Egypt have acted perversely. They have been quick to turn aside from the way that I commanded them. They have cast for themselves an image of a calf and have worshipped it and sacrificed to it and said, These are your gods, O Israel, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. The Lord said to Moses, I have seen this people, how stiff-necked they are. Now let me alone, so that my wrath may burn hot against them and I may consume them. And of you, I will make a great nation. But Moses implored the Lord his God and said, O Lord, why does your wrath burn hot against your people, whom you brought out of the land of Egypt with great power and a mighty hand? Why should the Egyptians say it was with evil intent that he brought them out to kill them in the mountains and to consume them from the face of the earth? Turn from your fierce wrath. Change your mind. Do not bring disaster on your people. Remember Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, your servants, how you swore to them by your own self, saying to them, I will multiply your descendants like the stars of heaven, and all this land that I have promised I will give to your descendants, and they shall inherit it forever. And the Lord changed his mind about the disaster he had planned to bring on his people. This ends the reading of our first lesson. We ask God's blessing on the reading of his word. We continue to believe that we must earn our way into God's heart, but God's grace is given to each of us, for all of us, freely, unconditionally, always. Let us open our lives to this mercy. As we pray, God of grace, you invite us to a banquet and we don't even respond. You set us a place at the table, but we find excuses not to come. You lovingly prepare for our arrival, yet we ignore your efforts. Forgive us, God. God of creation, you give us a world capable of abundance, but we act as if it is a world of scarcity. You give us the resources and the intelligence to provide for all, yet we lack the will and the vision to feed all your children. Forgive us, God, for filling our plates while others go hungry. God of love, you call us to be the body of Christ in the world, but we hoard the blessings and communion for ourselves. Instead of loving our neighbors, we are consumed by the love of self, Instead of loving you, we bow before idols of our own making. Forgive us, God. God of hope, we avert our eyes when we see hunger and need. We close our ears to the cries of the poor and the oppressed. We refuse to let our minds be opened to the realities of our world. We refuse to let our hearts overflow with love and compassion. Forgive us, God. God of mercy, as you once again call us into fellowship. Help us to respond in faith. Forgive our failures and help us to learn from them. Change our hearts and minds as we hear your good news proclaimed. Help us to taste and see the goodness you have prepared for us and for the world. Amen. In our midst, the Holy Spirit teaches us all we need to know. Give us what we need in order to be faithful 
and fills us with peace. We are a loved and forgiven people. Thanks be to God. And this morning we are very fortunate to have Krista sharing with us, leading our singing and of course offering her ministry of music. And I'm going to invite her to do that just now. Thank you, Reverend Bill. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Uh, this morning, my ministry of music is entitled Freely, Freely, uh, composed by Carol Owens, who is still living and 96 years young. And this song is based on uh, Matthew chapter 10, verse 8, and Matthew chapter 28, verse 18. And I encourage you after the service to have a read of both of those verses. And what I have taken from uh, the scripture lesson is that we have freely received God's love and forgiveness, and so in turn, we should freely give of ourselves. As the scripture in Matthew chapter 10, verse 8 says, you have received without paying, so give without being paid. And my hope for all of you is that you give of yourselves, be it a smile, be it a hello, be it a hug for someone that hasn't had a hug in a long time, without the expectation of receiving anything in return. It costs nothing sometimes to give of yourself freely. I welcome everyone, if you know the words, to join with me in singing the chorus, Freely, Freely. Krista, that was beautiful. I also appreciated your words of introduction to it. In fact, I was having a discussion just earlier this week 
Um, and uh, in the course of that discussion, it was shared that um, another minister in our area had expressed uh, in, a, in a conversation about what they miss about the church or what they miss about what used to happen in the church. Um, she had shared that she missed the fact of people giving testimonies. And it brought me back in mind when I first moved to, to Newfoundland um, and I started attending Central United Church. At the time, Reverend Joe Burton was the minister there. Uh, Reverend Joe is uh, a bit evangelical in his nature, so we would have our evening worship service at 7 o'clock and the benediction would be pronounced and half of the people would probably leave, but half would stay and they would have an after service. I don't know if you're familiar with after services or not, but it was a time in which, you know, they would sing choruses and individuals would just stand up and share their faith stories, uh, give their testimony and, and whatnot. And uh, this other minister who is speaking this week said that you know, she missed that aspect of the church, that we don't share our faith. And hearing your words of introduction sort of reminded me of that. I appreciate you taking the time to to add a little bit before you shared your, your gift of song. Our minute for mission for this morning is entitled Ecumenical Church Loan Fund, Anert's Story. 53-year-old Anert Mwenda is a bubbly and cheerful clothing trader in Siokamau, Kenya. Her path from housewife to entrepreneur has been filled with barriers. But with the help of mission and service partner, Ecumenical Church Loan Fund, or the ECLOF, her business is flourishing. After recognizing that her personal savings weren't meeting the rising needs of her business, Anert turned to a self-help group set up by ECLOF Kenya. While taking training programs on business and entrepreneurship, her business grew alongside her skill set. Today, her business employs three workers. When her husband passed away after a long illness, Anert and her five children were faced with tremendous hospital debt. The loan from ECLOF Kenya alleviated some financial strain, while her peers and ECLOF's loan officer provided emotional support to help her process her grief. Your gifts to mission and service make it possible for partners to walk alongside women like Anert as they work to achieve their entrepreneurial goals. Anert says, and I quote, ECLOF Kenya is a good listening partner who is ready to walk the journey of possibilities and impossibilities with their customers, end quote. ECLOF shares that they feel Anert's commitment, perseverance, and passion have truly made it possible for her to achieve her dreams. We are living, breathing messages of God's love for the world. This is our work of faith and our labor of love and our steadfastness of hope in Jesus Christ. Like the earliest Christians, we are here in this place because of the commitment and faith and generosity of others who shared the good news of the gospel in their time. So we turn now in our time and share our faith and our commitment through generous giving to support the ministry of this church in Christ's service. Let us gather our gifts together and offer them to God in gratitude and praise. As your gifts are being received, I would invite you to remain seated as we sing hymn 677, O God of Every Nation.
well as the gifts which we present now, we wish to acknowledge the following gifts which have been given. First, with memorials that have been received to the Memorial Fund in loving memory of Joyce Pye, from Dorothy Palmer, from Dorothy Sullivan, from Leslie Hicks, from David Hicks, from niece Beth and Doug Noseworthy and family, and from Marcia Diamond, and a gift to the Memorial Fund in loving memory of Ronald Pete from daughter Marilyn Clark. We also give thanks for gifts given to the Building Fund in loving memory of David Neary, from Ruth Gail Rooney, from Heather Hen Hennerby, from David and Yvonne Pike, from Scott Dick, from Ken Byrne, and from Claudia Langell. Let us pray. God of love, you abide with us. You provide for all our needs and guide us in your ways. Out of gratitude for your care, we bring our gifts before you. Take these gifts given now and through power and other means and use them for your work of caring that all may feast at the table of abundance, walk without fear, and drink deeply from the cup of compassion. Amen. Thank you, folks. Morning. Morning. Reading from the Old Testament, the book of Isaiah, chapter 25, verse 1 to 9. Lord, you are my God. I will exalt you and praise your name for in perfect faithfulness. You have done wonderful things, things planned long ago. You have made the city a heap of rubble, the fortified town a ruin, the foreigner's stronghold a city no more. It will never be rebuilt. Therefore, strong peoples will honor you. Cities of ruthless nations will revere you. You have been a refuge for the poor, a refuge for the needy in their distress, a shelter from the storm, and a shade from the heat. For the breath of the ruthless is like a storm driving against a wall, and like the heat of the desert. You silence the uproar of foreigners, as heat is reduced by the shadow of a cloud. So the song of the ruthless is stilled. On this mountain, the Lord Almighty will prepare a, a feast of rich food for all the peoples, a banquet of aged wine, the best of meats, and the finest of wines. On this mountain, he will destroy the shroud that enfolds all peoples, the sheet that covers all nations, he will swallow up death forever. The sovereign Lord will wipe away the tears from all faces. He will remove his people's disgrace from all the earth. The Lord has spoken. In, this, in that day they will say, Surely this is our God. We trusted in him, and he saved us. This is the Lord. We trusted in him. Let us rejoice and be glad in his salvation. Reading from the New Testament, Philippians chapter 4, verse 1 to 9. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, from whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm in the Lord in this way, dear friends. I plead with Judea and I plead with Sintich to be of the same mind in the Lord. Yes, and I ask you, my true companion, Help these women, since they have contended at my side in the cause of the gospel, along with Clement and the rest of my co-workers, whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, 
Whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice, and the God of peace will be with you. The word of the Lord. We do offer our thanks to Wanda Wells for bringing to us our previous two readings. And finally, we turn now to the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Matthew, reading from the 22nd chapter. Once again, let us listen for the word of God. Once more, Jesus spoke to them in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a wedding banquet for his son. He sent his slaves to call those who had been invited to the wedding banquet, but they would not come. Again, he sent other slaves, saying, Tell those who have been invited, Look, I have prepared my dinner, my oxen and my fat calves have been slaughtered, and everything is ready. Come to the wedding banquet." But they made light of it and went away, one to his farm, another to his business, while the rest seized his slaves, mistreated them, and killed them. The king was enraged. He sent his troops, destroyed those murderers, and burned their city. Then he said to his slaves, the wedding is ready, but those invited were not worthy. Go, therefore, into the main streets and invite everyone you find to the wedding banquet. Those slaves went out into the streets and gathered all whom they found, both good and bad. So the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to see the guests, he noticed a man there who was not wearing a wedding robe. And he said to him, friend, how did you get in here without a wedding robe? And he was speechless. Then the king said to the attendants, bind him hand and foot and throw him into the outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. This ends the reading of our scripture lessons and we ask God's blessing on the reading of his word. Let us join together as we sing our next hymn, number 508, Just As I Am.
Let us pray. In the meditation of our hearts and the words of my lips, if they be your words, be acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. O Lamb of God, I come. In our gospel lesson today, Jesus gives us another one of those perplexing parables. Comparing the kingdom of heaven to a great wedding feast. And the father of the groom, the, everything prepared, sent out the invitations, and when the time had come, he sent out his servants to go and gather those who had been invited. But they all had excuses not to come. I'm busy. I have work to do. I'm not feeling good. And so he sent more to try and urge them, please, all of these preparations have been made. Everything is here for you, for the feast. All you have to do is show up. And still, they refused. In fact, some of them took his servants and were told they were mistreated, and then they killed them for being such an annoyance, for being such a pain. The king responded, by going out and returning justice, I suppose, an eye for an eye in those days, and killed the ones who had mistreated his servants. And then he said to the ones who were left, go out into the streets and invite anyone you see, good or bad, that this banquet might go ahead, that we might gather together and celebrate together. And I'll stop right there. The first part of the service, or the first part of the parable, I mean, seems to draw a connection between the prophets that God had sent to the people throughout the ages, inviting them to turn to God. And of course, the prophets were either ignored or they were slain. The message was lost on the people. They didn't come to God. And so God had gotten to that point where things were going to change. He got tired of proclaiming that message over and over, that invitation over and over again. And so there was a new servant who had come. That servant being Christ. And this was the servant who would go to the streets and speak to any and all and invite them to come, the good and the bad. Come to the banquet. It was an open feast for everyone. The change had come. It was no longer simply a, a restricted invitation to be God's people. But instead, it was now an open invitation to any and all who would hear and who would respond. To be a part of, of that, that celebration, that feast. And that's the message that comes to us this day and age that the kingdom of God is indeed open for all. There is no specific uh, restrictive invitation given. The invitation is simply come, be a part of the kingdom. And it's a message that should be one of absolute joy for us. Because that invitation includes us with all of our flaws, with all of our shortcomings. God says, no, you're, you're a part of this. You're welcome here. And it's a message that we need to keep in our minds and in our hearts when we look at the world around us. Because we're invited as well to come to the understanding that, that people whom we might deem unworthy are not seen in that way through God's eyes. God sees everyone as being acceptable, welcome at the feast. But there is a little twist that's found in this parable, which makes it 
a little difficult to understand because we're told that once all of the people had gathered, the king entered into the banquet hall and he saw one individual who was not in the wedding robes. One individual who didn't dress up for the occasion. And he questioned him. He said, why, why didn't you bother to put on a wedding robe? And the person was left speechless. And we're told that the king had him bound and cast outside, excluded from the feast. And it's troubling because it seems like such a, a simple thing that this person was guilty of doing but because of his failure, he was excluded. And, and we're left to question, why did that happen? I can recall for years and years and years being told I had to dress properly to go to church. From the very age, you know, when I was old enough to walk, I had my little blue blazer and I had my little white shirt, my gray dress pants, and my clip-on tie, because I knew I could never tie a tie. Now, if I thought for one minute that I was going to get into church in a pair of jeans on Sunday morning, my mother was not very long in uh, changing my approach, shall we say. You had to dress right to go to church. Now, I've always been of the mindset, I don't care how you come dressed. I just want to see you come. But the words and the example that we have in this feast, in this parable, seem to indicate that my mother was right. And I'd hate to admit that publicly. <laughs> that somehow I was wrong and she was right. But it's not a matter of the dress code. I think that what this really is, is a reminder that although there is that banquet in which all are welcome to attend, all are welcome to be a part of, that God asks of us to at least make an effort. It's a warning about sitting back on our laurels. We, we know as we gather here this day, we are God's children, that God loves us. Absolutely, completely. But God does ask us in response to share that message, to share in that celebration, to make the effort to let others know to make the effort to, to share in the full joy and celebration of that banquet. It's not that the person was punished because they couldn't, they couldn't come in a wedding robe. It's because they didn't bother to make the effort, to show perhaps respect to the king or to the king's son. Instead, they, they took that casual approach. I'm, I'm here. We are all here. But let us never forget who it was who invited us and who else has been invited. And let us do our best to convey with each and every one and to our God that we are grateful for being a part of the family, and we will do our best to make sure that others feel a part of the family as well. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Our gracious and loving God, we give you thanks for the beauty of this day and the opportunity to begin by sharing in fellowship and worship and praise. We thank you for that after a, a week of rain and drizzle and fog, we finally get to experience a bit of sunshine before the rains come again. Perhaps a, a fitting reminder 
that no matter what the day may be, no matter what the day may bring, this is indeed the day that you have made. And we are called to rejoice and be glad in it. So let us, as we sang in our opening hymn, praise you for the sun. But at the same time, might we remember the second verse tomorrow and praise you for the rain. We give you thanks, O God, for the fellowship that we find within this place, the opportunity to come together as brothers and sisters on this journey of faith that you had invited us to walk. We find a a comfort and a strength here. Uniting our voices in hymns of praise, uniting our hearts in moments of prayer. But we ask that you would help us to remember that our worship does not simply begin at 11 a.m., that we sign off at 12, but instead that our worship must continue every moment of our lives. And so as we step from this sanctuary out into the greater sanctuary of your creation, help us to understand that the people whom we meet are also fellow travelers on this path. May we share with them our faith. May we share with them our love. May we share with them our story. But even as we come to you this day, O Lord, with our praise and our thanksgiving, we also come with our concerns and our fears. Once again, we see our world being touched by violence and war. We've been witness to it for far too long in the Ukraine. Now we see it renewed in Israel and Palestine. We light our candle every week to remind us that our Savior came to be the Prince of Peace, yet somehow we still maintain a warring mindset. Help us, dear God, to find a different way. Help us to look towards resolving conflict in ways that do not involve beating down those who stand opposed to us. Help us to find peaceful relationships, not only in our world, but within our churches, within our families and homes, within our interactions with all your children, that we might truly be the peaceful people you would have us be. Pause to remember before you the needs of your people around the world. People who are hungry and thirsting. People who are seeking justice. People who are looking for answers to the deeper questions of life. We ask that you would help us to respond to them, to share of our time, our talents, our resources, to share with them our stories, to listen, to care, to love. We think of those who are known to us who have special needs this day, members of our church family, friends of our church family, We lift up to Eugene Forward and Herb Morrison, Jim Delaney and Jeanette Saunders, Bill Aiken and Bob Pound. We think of Pearl Morgan and Joan Balsam and Shirley Bragg, Blanche Baldwin and Vera O'Keefe, Gladys Crane, Dorothy Butt and Daryl Russell, John Foote. We think of Peggy and Ted, Barb and Diane others whom we name in the silence of our hearts, and we ask, O Lord, that you would be with these people to let them know that you are at work in their lives for your good. We think as well this day, O Lord, of those who are grieving, those who are mourning the loss of loved ones or changes in their lives. 
continue to lift up to you the, the family and the friends of Reverend Eddie Gordon Murray. We think of the family of David Neary. And we ask, dear God, that you would let them know that you walk with them now as they pass through that dark valley. We pray that you would lead them gently to the brighter promise of your new day. We ask those same blessings upon our own lives. For each and every one of us stands in need of your healing touch. Each and every one of us stands in need of that calming assurance that we are never alone as we journey through this life, for your spirit is always with us and upon us. And we pray that feeling the touch of your spirit, we might draw strength from it so that we may respond to your highest of calling that each of us may let our light so shine before others that they might see our good works and give you the glory. For we ask it in Christ's name and we pray as he taught us, saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. <laughs> Our closing hymn for this morning is hymn number 608, Dear God Who Loves All Humankind, 608. In my haste, and as a result of the excitement I experienced in announcing yet another flipper dinner, I forgot our birthdays this week. And we do have two people celebrating birthdays we'd like to offer our best wishes to, and those are to Millicent Day and to Jim Delaney. So I would invite you just to offer your best wishes to all of them now. Like I said, Austin Matthews has got six goals now in two games. The Toronto Maple Leafs are two and oh. 
I'll be taking a week of my holidays in the spring of the year to go up for the Stanley Cup parade and celebrations. <laughs> and that is why the sun is shining today. You can get whatever reason you want in your mind for thinking the sun is shining. The sun is shining today because God is good. And the rain will be falling tomorrow because God is is good. And as we go forth from this place, let that be the message that we take with us. No matter what encounters, no matter what struggles, what challenges we might experience, God is good and is deserving of our praise, our love, and our service. So let us take with us the gifts that God gives to us and let us bring those gifts to each and every one we meet. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship and communion of the Holy Spirit be with us and abide with us from this time forward and forevermore. Amen. God bless and stay safe. <laughs>